What happens if a ship falls into a big whirlpool? Whirlpools, how dangerous can they be? How deadly are they for human beings? How destructive are they for vessels? Can whirlpools suck ships, boats, or even barges in? Or do they pose a danger only for human beings who fall into them? In these shots, you can see how the rafter Steve Fisher got sucked in by a powerful current that the athlete had the bad luck to encounter when descending the Congo River as part of a Red Bull-sponsored competition. Fisher, a world-class athlete, had a run-in with the mighty rapids of this African river, yet this was not among the most dangerous whirlpools that exist on our planet, and far from the most dangerous whirlpools that are theoretically possible. Don't try at home what one of the world's top rafting pros barely managed to escape from, and that was even with the help of others. There are whirlpools much more dangerous than along the Congo River. Some of these vortexes in the water pose a threat not only to people, but even heavier objects. A boat? A yacht? A ship? A barge? Even giant vessels can face destruction if any of them, separately or together, are sucked into one of these real aquatic monsters. But let's start by taking a look at whirlpools themselves, at what they are, how they arise, and what real danger and destructive force they pose. No, not like that. Whirlpools are not specially stirred up by anyone. Rather, they form on their own due to internal processes. Currents in a body of water collide and merge, and thereby they create circular flows that are made stronger by the turbulence, as if the water is being turned inward. If there is a deep hole under the water, and above this hole, tons of water are flowing from opposite directions towards each other, a vortex is created, and this is what a whirlpool actually is. Let's try to helpfully illustrate this principle with, oddly enough, a clockwork mechanism. As we explain, you'll understand why we chose precisely this as an example. You can see how the tireless little gears in a clockwork mechanism drive one another on by rotating as they constantly grip on one another with their teeth. Each of these gears rotates only because the entire ensemble rotates together. They're never slowed down by friction against one another, but rather they work together in mutual movement. Now imagine that these are not little gears at all, but water currents. The flow of water, when there is turbulence and currents moving towards each other, will rotate from the impact just like these gears. The principle of torque is basically analogous. Only water, unlike the gears in a clockwork mechanism, does more than just rotate. And if there's the necessary turbulence, it'll form a funnel that sucks things in. Thus, for a whirlpool to arise in nature, we need the following. A sufficient mass of moving water, the presence of currents moving in opposite directions within this mass, and a pit that's deep enough to generate a flow that swirls inward. Generally, the fastest whirlpools are those of mountain rivers. They can sometimes reach speeds of seven miles per hour. However, mountain rivers do not have an amount of water sufficient to suck truly large objects in. People and animals often perish in these currents, but larger objects, for example, ships, are just too big for mountain rivers to affect. For those big objects, you need to bring out the heavy artillery. The Saltstraumen Whirlpool, Norway. Today is perhaps the world's most powerful naturally forming whirlpool. It arises four times per day, precisely every six hours, in a strait that is 1.86 miles long and 492 feet wide, and connects the Saltfjorden and the Skierstad Ford with the Barents Sea. In this hellish funnel, there are gigantic volumes of water that move at unimaginable speeds. Over a single cycle, the salt storm and whirlpool circulates billions of cubic feet of liquid, all at a speed of up to 23 miles per hour. If a person fell into such a whirlpool, then sadly, the chances for survival are slim. And even if a whole boat fell in, it's believed that the salt storm and whirlpool does not pose a risk to large vessels, but to avoid any tragedy, traffic in the strait is scheduled to avoid the times when the dangerous Norwegian whirlpool comes to life. The Maelstrom, a whirlpool famous from Edgar Allan Poe's short story, A Descent into the Maelstrom. Similar whirlpools are found in Norwegian waters. In the Norwegian Sea, these are less brutal than the Saltstrom and Whirlpool, but much more unpredictable and sneaky, and so they are no less dangerous. Indeed, they can be even more dangerous. Maelstrom's rotation barely ever exceeds 8 miles per hour, but these whirlpools are dangerous because of how sudden they can appear. The rocks, the currents, everything here is set up in a way that makes it impossible to predict when the vortex will arise and how fast it will spin, and when water will begin to be sucked into it. Maelstroms, just like the Saltstrom and Whirlpool, can form several times per day, but there's no rhyme or reason to their formation. They might appear two or three times a day. They might appear five or six times. Such cases are known. 
Infamously, people have been killed or severely injured in maelstroms on a number of occasions. Maelstroms are capable of overturning even small fishing boats, and such incidences have happened. Today, ships prefer to give these Norwegian monsters a wide berth in order to avoid tragedy. The Naruto whirlpools. These come in at number three in their danger to life and limb, and are rightly called the Japanese wonder. Nowhere else in the world is there such a large number of powerful whirlpools in such close vicinity to one another. It's practically impossible to escape them. If you break free from one, you immediately fall into another. These vortexes spin only in the Naruto Strait, under a bridge close to the city of Naruto. Three or four whirlpools can form at the same time, on average every six hours. The average diameter of each of the Naruto whirlpools is 50 feet, but the diameter constantly changes depending on the frequency and intensity of the ebb and flow in the strait. The peak activity of the Naruto whirlpools occurs during the spring flood. At that time, these whirlpools grow to a diameter of 65 feet, and the speed at which they rotate reaches as high as 13 miles per hour. The Naruto whirlpools are a magnificent sight, but only at a safe distance. Getting up close and personal with these wonders of nature is not recommended. The Saltstrom and Whirlpool, Maelstroms, the Naruto Whirlpools. These are gigantic vortexes that exist under natural conditions. But let's imagine how big a whirlpool can grow that's created artificially through technological means. For this, we need to make the strongest current that already exists on our planet and make it spin through powerful turbulence, causing the current to become even more deadly. The world's most powerful current is the Antarctic Circumpolar Current, also known as the West Wind Drift. It flows around Antarctica and is approximately three times more powerful than the Gulf Stream. The length of the West Wind Drift is over 18,600 miles and its maximum width is around 1,553 miles. Over one second, this monster of a current moves 200 million tons of water along, and over just one minute, 12 billion tons. This unimaginably vast amount of water, dozens or hundreds of thousands of billions of tons, is swept along at a speed of 190 feet per second. Now, if we exploded, say, a few 20 to 30 megaton atomic bombs around the perimeter of the west wind drift under the tectonic plates, then due to the holes that are formed in the oceanic crust, a whirlpool will be created that's five to 10 times faster than the raging river current that swept Steve Fisher along. Imagine that rushing at you with the speed of a car is an entire ocean. This is what our artificially created whirlpool would be like. With the amount of water that would be involved, hundreds of billions of tons, not only would ships, yachts, boats, and barges disappear, but so would entire fleets of many thousands of vessels, oil rigs, and any other structure that's in the path of this wild Antarctic current. In addition, as a result of such a catastrophic development, currents and even the sea level could change all over the globe. We'll return to artificially created whirlpools shortly, but for now, let's turn away from these horror stories and back to reality, and to our champion athlete, Steve Fisher. Do you see how hard this was on the extreme athlete? Fisher later said that he nearly drowned and that it was a miracle that he's still among the living. He was saved by the fact that he had an air cylinder with him. Underwater, Fisher was able to continue breathing with it for about a minute, and then he was pulled ashore. Fisher's many years of experience in the sport and high level of qualification was still not enough to save him from a run-in with this fast-moving river current. Even a whirlpool that's not among the world's strongest can nevertheless be a mortal danger. And now, here's a real example of an artificially created giant whirlpool that turned out to be thousands of times more dangerous than that one in the Congo. 7 a.m. on Friday, November the 21st, 1980. A team of drillers from Wilson Brothers Corporation was prospecting for oil underneath the bottom of Louisiana's Lake Peño. However, under the lake bed was an old salt mine, and the drillers did not take this minor detail into account. During the drilling, a hole was punched into a shaft in the old mine at a depth of around 1,300 feet. What happened is something that no one could have imagined. The water plunged down into the space that had opened up, instantly demolishing the walls, vaulting, and supports of the mine shaft. On the surface, an enormous whirlpool formed, 180 feet in diameter, and it destroyed a tugboat, a drilling rig, 11 barges, a whole island with a botanical garden on it, dozens of trucks, and even several houses. Luckily, not a single human life was lost. A whirlpool of such immense power could easily pull the legendary Titanic to the bottom was that ship's mass was several times smaller than the total mass that the artificially created Lake Peña whirlpool sucked in. 
The most surprising thing about this incident is that the video of it has got a lot of likes on the internet. And only because, luckily, not a single human life was lost. Is there any chance that a person aboard a ship could survive after being sucked into such a mega whirlpool? To make it out alive, you'd need a seriously strong capsule that could withstand the water pressure of many tons. And in addition, there'd have to be a large amount of air in the capsule. Take, for example, what happened when the tugboat Jascon 4 was crushed. The tugboat capsized and sank off Nigeria on May the 26th, 2013. Everyone on board died, except the ship's cook, Harrison Okaney. He was fortunate enough to lock himself in an airtight cabin and survived underwater for three days before being rescued. When rescuers brought Okaney up to the surface, it turned out that an air pocket formed in the space where the cook had sought refuge, and that's why Harrison Okaney was not crushed. However, the chances that any other person on a sinking ship would be so lucky are slim. So, to survive a mega whirlpool, you need to be in a capsule, which is a hermetically sealed air bubble. And of course, rescuers have to arrive quickly, as you might soon run out of oxygen otherwise. If there is no hermetically sealed compartment with an air pocket, then the many tons of water around you will do their work. They will instantly crush the space itself and everyone inside of it. Secondly, such a powerful whirlpool always forms when the depths reach hundreds of feet, and it's impossible to escape from such a depth just on your own. Although, if the depth is not great, not 13 to 1700 feet, but just 50 to 65 feet, the chances are still slim. A person would have to have an incredible level of physical fitness to swim up from under 50 or 65 feet of water. For an ordinary person, already at a depth of 10 feet, due to the water pressure, the diaphragm is unable to expand enough for the lungs to fully fill with air. All in all, whirlpools are no joke. It's best to avoid them, even the smallest ones. After all, even gentle little whirlpools can grow stronger at any moment, leaving even experienced pros unable to get out of them. That's all for today. We hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching.